This is Vantage, which is the latest release from Barrel Craft Spirits. And it's a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in all the oak. All the oak known to man goes into this bottle right here. My name is TJ Gamble and this is Bruzel, which is just an elaborate attempt to make my bourbon selection a tax deduction. Let's get right into the review. As I said, Barrel Vantage is a blend of straight bourbon whiskeys finished in Mizanara French and toasted American oak. So not all the woods, but pretty much all the woods most people are using these days. I found these online for about 80-ish dollars and they seem to be fairly widely available. Let's take a look at the bottle and see what she reveals. This is bottled at cask strength, so it comes in at 114.44 proof or 57.22% alcohol by volume. On the back, distilled in Indiana, Tennessee, and Kentucky, USA. Vantage is a bourbon dedicated to the arts of barrel selection and blending. It's a blend of straight bourbons finished in three distinct types of virgin oak that highlights toasted notes and the elegance of the finishing barrels. It's bottled at cask strength so you can experience its true flavor. So not a ton of info there other than it's sourced from three different states, finished and blended together. Obviously we're growing our cloud a little bit on this YouTube channel because we now have enough for Barrel to send us this bottle. Although this is not a paid review. If it sucks, I'm gonna tell you so. Even though we're trying to do our first Bruzel store pick with Barrel, it's gonna be a little awkward if I say bad things about it, but that's the nature of the beast. So let's get into this guy and give it a try. So we're looking for a new format to keep these a little more fun and entertaining. So in the last review we did, we judged it based on 10 criteria. But looking back at that video, I was being a little bit of an asshole judging it by 10 different criteria. Like really, it's not that important. Like what's important to me is what's actually in the bottle, not the bottle design, not necessarily the price. You may get it for a good price, you may pay secondary prices for it and it's hard for me to judge that. So we're gonna cut this down to five different criteria that I feel like are most important for you to be able to tell whether or not this is a quality spirit. So you could judge for yourself whenever you find it out in the wild, whatever the price may be, because we know they're all over the freaking place, whether or not you wanna pull the trigger and buy that bottle. And the first thing we're judging it on is the nose, the aroma. And you could definitely smell the finish on this one. It's got a nice toasty oak to it. And I'm not a huge Finnish whiskey fan, but the ones I do like are typically just finished in some oak, not a wine barrel. And this is finished in all the oaks. I'm definitely getting a little cinnamon graham cracker on the nose along with that kind of light oakiness, but not a ton of flavors. It's not an overwhelming nose to me, but it is above average. So I'm gonna give it a six. And the next judging criteria is just the flavor. What does it freaking taste like? It delivers on a lot of that. It's got a nice sweetness. It kind of develops into a bit of oakiness on the mid palate. And then on the finish, a lot of that kind of dissipates and it leaves you with not a ton of heat for the proof. Like that actually drinks pretty well for that high of proof. Now, you're not gonna confuse it for an 80 proofer, but overall the flavors on that are really solid. I do pick up a little bit of bitter oak, which again, I'm not a huge fan of. I feel like that takes away from me picking up other complexities in the whiskey, but it's really, really subtle. Again, above average on that, and I, I would give that a solid six as well. The next criteria is the complexity. And with complexity, what I'm looking for is does the whiskey evolve as I'm consuming it? And this is something that really skews more toward higher proof whiskeys. Like they're just more likely to have a nice complexity to it. And this one absolutely has that. You get a lot of sweetness up front. Like I said, I get some of that oak on the mid palate and that kind of dissipates into a nice sweetness on the finish. So complexity wise, I'm getting a lot of different things going on with this whiskey. I'm gonna give it an eight. And the next one is going to be mouthfeel. Like how does it coat your mouth? Again, something that kind of skews toward higher proof whiskey. We're going to be biased toward higher proof whiskeys. Although this is a little higher than what I feel like is that perfect range of 100 to 107. That's got a great oiliness to it. Like it's a super thick, whiskey that just coats the mouth. I don't know if you could get much better of a mouth feel on that whiskey. Like if you get that up on the Glen Cairn and you just spin it all over yourself like that, like it just kind of sticks to the side of the glass. I went a little too hard on that spin, but you could see how slow that's draining down the glass. 
That's that's a next level mouthfeel on that one. I'm gonna give it a nine. And the next criteria is finish. Like, what does it leave you with when you're done drinking this bourbon? And so again, that nice oakiness, it leaves me with a little bit of sweetness. And then that sweetness starts to dissipate and the oak and the heat start to come through a little bit. And anytime you have a finish that actually has some complexity to it, I'm a fan of that. So I'm gonna give that a solid eight as well. So that gives this a brusal score of 37 out of 50. And we'll see how that stacks up against other popular whiskeys as we move forward. Let me know in the comments if you like this format better. Does all the things I cut out, like bottle design and transparency, does that crap really matter to you? Or is there anything else we should be considering when we're judging these whiskeys? 